Some two somebodies have been busy out in the snow. Let's see it. Oh man. I'm trying to get it into that ring. Oh yeah? Yeah. Why that ring? Because I made it. Oh. We're going to put snow on it so it can be white instead of brown. Yeah. And then we're going to make a huge snowman. Oh, look at the trails. We curved all over it. Yeah, them. you did. In that ring. In that ring. You know? <laughs> These two kids love when it snows. They spend a lot of time out here building stuff. Let's make it even bigger! Wow, look at that! Yeah. So it's all clean. You guys know school isn't canceled, right? Yeah. We gotta go get ready for school. Aww. So last night it snowed about six inches. It's now later in the morning and snowing again. But it is supposed to let up here in a couple hours. And you can already see it's melting pretty quick. This will all be gone in a couple days. But of course, you know what that means. We got a muddy mess over at the house pad. Look at all that water. So this is on hold again. But that's okay, we've got plans. We've wanted to have chickens now for quite some time and we were just looking for the right opportunity to give us the excuse and the time to build a chicken coop. And now's that time. You may remember we built our forms for the root cellar and they've been removed and kind of sitting around. There's two walls right here. We're gonna strip these down. That's gonna be our material. And most of the material is already here, just sitting there. So we shouldn't have to get very much from the store. We'll probably have to get some odds and ends. And if you're just joining us, those two by fours that we made our forms out of, we saw milled ourselves right here from logs that we get out of the woods nearby on our own with <laughs> a log arch that we built ourselves that attaches to that trailer. That is probably one of the most enjoyable things to do is to go and get logs out of the woods with the, the log arch. I can't wait to do that again, but I also can't wait to have this chicken coop. So we're gonna strip these forms down and we're gonna show you what our idea is for a good chicken coop. <laughs> Can't do it. <laughs> it takes practice. I mean, you have a, a 
finishing hammer versus a framing hammer. I know yours seems to but, do more. But it's heavier. More punch. Oh, you want to switch? I switch hammers? I guess I'll try it out. Watch. Framing hammer. Oh man, I could do that with my eyes closed with this one. Look at how much bigger the head is. I know, right? It's like twice. <laughs> at least. Holy yeah. cow. It is way bigger. We need another one. This is a finish hammer. This is a framing hammer. Yeah. I'm, I think we're both better with the framing hammer, obviously. <laughs> We uh, need a big sur bigger surface area. But I don't know. You you struggle the most, I have to say. <laughs> I'm not a framer either though, but I mean Natalie was hammering with a right-handed hammer and she's left-handed, so gets me every time. <laughs> okay, we got the legs done. Here's the beginnings of the coop. We are four foot wide by eight foot long. Not too big. It's gonna be up off the ground. As you can see here, this is gonna be the floor. And underneath, we'll be able to store things, uh, I guess, out of the weather, maybe chicken feed and whatnot. The reason, the main reason I like this design is I can get the forks on the backhoe and scoop the whole coop up and move it wherever we want whenever we want, uh, if it needs to change locations. So that's the purpose, the, the main purpose for it being high. The other purpose is that I think it, this makes it a lot more predator proof. The whole thing is enclosed. We don't have to worry about anything digging in from underneath. So that's a plus. A minus currently is the post that we made. That's not pressure treated, so it's not pets proof. But we're going to do our own pest proof by burning the wood. I think it's called Shoshugiban. I, I may be saying that completely wrong, <laughs> but I, I believe it's Japanese. You burn the wood, makes it pest proof, also helps to make it uh, weather resistant. So that's the plan. And actually, I want to kind of, I want to burn the whole thing when we're done and see how that turns out. I want to try that look. So here's the beginnings of it. Now we just gotta frame in the rest of the floor and then we can start putting walls up.
Ofo. Iya. Yeah. He is our new puppy. He was a rescue that we adopted. The kids love him. Yeah. He is 11 weeks old. His mom was a border collie healer mix. And we don't know what his dad is. But he's joined our family. Barkley. He's definitely a puppy. He likes to chew on everything. Some of you know we had a dog. Last summer she passed away. She was old. She was 12 years old and had gotten sick. So the kids have been begging to get a puppy. And so now we have Berkeley. Okay, we got the floor framing in. Everything's 16 inches on center. We've got this board on the bottom here. That has a specific purpose. The forks on our backo are not very long. This is four foot wide coop, but they don't reach, they only reach to about right here. So this board is there. So when the forks come under, they have something to sit on instead of having the forks come up through the floor, which is gonna be uh, some OSB, which is not, not the greatest material for the floor, but that's what we have. We've got plenty of it. And that is going to be the floor. So we're putting that in next. And then we're going to start framing up the walls in such a way that they will uh, make it easy for us to attach the type of siding we're going to put on, which is custom siding that we cut ourselves. We put it on our shed. It's the same siding we put on our shed. And we have, I think we have plenty of that material to where we could do this. So let's put the flooring in and start framing the walls. Okay, so we stripped our 2x4s down to 2x2s and I'm laying out the stud pattern here. So since we're doing our own siding and it's uh, pretty custom, I guess, we need a lot of studs. <laughs> and to save on material, that's why I split them in half. Because of the style of siding that we're putting in the studs are going to be 10 inches on center super overkill it is definitely not needed for a coupe like this and to be honest if if we were doing say uh t111 
type of siding, those four by eight sheets, I wouldn't even put any, I put hardly any framing here. But this is, so that's the only reason why we're going bonkers on framing is because we have our own siding. And believe it or not, for us, it's gonna be cheaper that way. <laughs> T111 has gone way up in price. But man, I, I really don't like the look of it. We're kind of trying to keep things uh, aesthetically pleasing to the eye. So the wall here, how it's being laid out. We're gonna have two vents at the top. Oh, oh I might have to. I think I might have to cut the boards down. I think I cut them too long. But anyway, so at the top of the wall, you can see how this is um, going to go all the way up to the top plate up here. And then these are just going to be two giant vents that'll be right here because you need a lot of ventilation. But uh, my math went wrong somewhere and that opening looks too small. I'm going for a five inch and we got a three inch. You forgot about this, I guess. I did. I forgot to about that two inches right there. So I got to take these out and cut them all again. <laughs> two inches shorter. Here Measure we go. once, cut twice. Or maybe three times. <sighs> okay. All right. We caught them to the right size. Two seconds for you. 10 minutes, 15 minutes for me, whatever. Also wanted to mention we are reusing the old nails from the concrete form that this used to be. So I cannot wait till I run out. It's, this is not fun. I wanna just, the nail gun would go a hundred times faster, but we're trying to be smart with uh, the dough. You know what I mean? Last night I got the last wall framed up. You can see here, this is where the uh, nesting boxes will go. But before I frame all that up and put it together, I wanna move on to framing the roof. So the coop is eight foot long and we want a little bit of an overhang, about a foot or so of an overhang on each side. But unfortunately, I don't have any two by fours that are that long. So we did some looking around and way back when we built our shed here, we had an, some extra pieces of lumber left over and this was before we had the sawmill. So we have an actual uh, store-bought two by six up there that we're gonna get down. That board right there. <laughs> Should be long enough since it's sticking out that far. And Natalie is already digging it out. Barkley. Don't bark at Dexter. 
He doesn't <laughs> like it. We've got all the OSB installed on the roof. You'll see we got a gap up there. That is necessary for venting. That's called uh, the ridge vent. And chicken coops need a lot of ventilation. I think I said that earlier. So we're moving on now to the nesting boxes. There's gonna be six of them. And they're all gonna be about a foot wide. And I think I'm gonna go with 14 inches deep. After that is done, then uh, we're ready to move on to siding.
that's gonna do for the chicken coop build for now. We're actually not gonna be working on this in the next video because believe it or not, all that snow dried up, the ground is dry, things are warming up. So we're gonna get back onto the house pad. We do have plans to finish this soon though because tomorrow we're actually gonna go ahead and get our baby chicks and get them in the brooder box. So it's coming along good, the framing's almost done. All that's left for framing is the, the nesting boxes. And then we move on to siding and that'll be it. So thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time.